let's look at the word mark. Here we want to see how many people have already been infected by HIV from AIDS. Who can read for me? Who can read for me? Yes? 40 million in the whole world. Is that a, a small number? No. One point seven million. Let's move to the Western Europe. Five hundred and forty thousand. Africa. Two point Which one is the leading continent there? Yes. Africa. Africa. For over 20 years, Africa has fought a never-ending battle with AIDS, the plague of the 20th century. Immense poverty, deprivation, unemployment, the lack of a properly constituted medical care service, prostitution amongst the underaged and children, these and more are the factors that have determined the spread of this disease. 60% of the population living below the poverty line. Girls have to go out and prostitute themselves in order to buy bread for their brothers and sisters. There are three families uh, near us here. Both parents are dead because of AIDS. Girls can become pregnant. And then the abortion rate, of course, as we know, is terrible. There's 1.5 million surgical abortions here every year. And that's not counting the back street ones. I was working as a medical doctor, obstetrician, gynecologist, when AIDS came. The first reality was when we began to get many, many patients and many people sick, and we couldn't cope in the hospital with the numbers. I experienced so much pain and so many people sick and dying of AIDS. It, it really dawned on me that this disease is preventable. I had been involved in giving uh, awareness programs and more and more statistics and information about how it spread, but Nothing seemed to be changing. Condoms were to be the ideal solution to this problem, with mainly rich industrial consortia interested in their distribution and in the huge profits to be made from their sale. We've also asked people who are very, very strong about condoms, if they were going to have sex, beautiful woman, beautiful man there, they've agreed to have sex with you, and right before you get into bed, they say, oh, um, just by the way, I do have HIV, but uh, I don't worry, I have a condom. Would you have sex with them? And invariably, the people say no. I wouldn't. Et il serait évidemment plus facile de promouvoir ce que l'on appelle. It would of course be easy to propagate what we call the condom, though we know that its method of use makes it a total failure. It arrives in containers already damaged, huge numbers having been stored under the sun, used by several people several times and then possibly rinsed. It serves children as a football to finally end up at roadside rubbish dumps. How is one to respect the human person if one's hopes for the future of humankind are to be determined by this piece of rubber? When this uh, question of condoms came about, uh, they, uh, we had pressure. They said we are not promoting uh, the right thing. People are going to die. People cannot look after themselves. People cannot abstain. Uh, the youth cannot wait until marriage. This is a, a different generation. We are not on the ground. But we said we are on the ground. You know, the truth always stands out uh, as light. We are not giving uh, one day's solution or two months' solution, but we are giving a solution to not only AIDS, but also to other sicknesses. 
In fact, the solution was the Education for Life and Behavior Change program, one based on premarital abstinence and marital fidelity, a program that can not only save hundreds of thousands of Ugandans from death, but the whole of Africa. Education for Life began in Uganda as behavior change with our sister Miriam. She herself diagnosed uh, this disease way back in 1982. From then on, another doctor, they came together and they put the behavior change program together. They were going around the schools um, warning the students about this disease. One head teacher said to them, we want you to do something else. You're telling us about this disease, but you're not telling us how to prevent it. So they had to sit down and put the Education for Life Behavior Change Program together. Sister Miriam Duggan, who Miriam Dagon, having seen the reality of nearly two generations die because of AIDS and a whole multitude of orphaned little children whose grandmothers barely managed to look after, realized that something absolutely had to be done. Behaviors changed, even more closely linked to respect and chastity. Respect for your fellow human being, a different way of looking at your fellow human being, a look that sees a human being and not an object to be used. I worked with the sister Miriam Duggan visiting the sick. At first there were no structures. We were working with the containers. And as she was a doctor, she invited some medical personnel to come and help the victims. They formed groups of young people, young men and women, who helped the sick, washing their clothes, are comforting them, speaking to them. When you work with youth, there's a lot of enthusiasm around youth, and if you give them ideals and motiv proper motivation uh, and get them on board, they will do most of the work for you. And we used a lot of music and drama and song to promote the messages. One of the years was to be a light in the world, or um, another time it was time to act. How could they, as young people, be a light in today's world? and then you would run a competition. So all the schools would turn up for the competition. So they were giving messages to each other all day long, as well as acting out the messages. And so hopefully through that, you were deepening that message within themselves to be the people that they wanted, really wanted to be. Statistics on Africa paint a bleak picture of over 34 million dead in all age groups since HIV AIDS was diagnosed in 1982. This includes children and young people under 18 years of age. It costs $200 a year to treat an adult, but even so, only a few can afford it. Centers like TASO, the AIDS support organization based in Uganda, bring aid to AIDS victims. We have people who have come here and they have been tested uh, for HIV antibodies and are found HIV positive. And if they accept to come, we also counsel them how to use the medicine because they also get the medical services from here. And we also counsel them to have a plan for their futures because most times when people have been pronounced HIV positive, they tend to fear. And sometimes, as a result, they die because of the stress that they have and the loss of hope. But we encourage them to have the hope for the future.